Good morning. Isn't it a blessing to be in the house of the Lord today? There's a lot of places you could be, but I'm so glad we are in the house of the Lord. And so we are glad to see you. Good to see some folks visiting with us today and some folks we haven't seen in a while. We are glad you're all here. Amen. Uh, I'm always reminded of the words of David when he said, I was glad when they said unto me, let us go to the house of the Lord. So we're here today to worship and bless Him. Please join me standing. Let's go to the Lord in prayer. And to those who are joining us online, I know Denise and Ernie are with us online. She texted me before service. Ernie is still recovering and healing. Uh, so we want to continue to remember Ernie in prayer, that God will continue to touch him. But this morning, let's just go before the Lord and let's ask not only that God would move in each and every one of our hearts, but uh, pray for one another this morning that God would touch in a meaningful and tangible way. Uh, I know God has a purpose, and you are not here by accident. And uh, I just know that uh, you're going to be blessed in the service today. So let's just open our hearts and uh, yield ourselves to the Lord and whatever God wants to do, that God would do a great work in our, in our service today. Amen? Amen. Let's pray. Father God, we come before you with thankfulness. Lord, thankful that we have the ability to come to this place freely. We can worship you openly. God, if we want to lift our hands, we can lift our hands. If we want to sing aloud, we can sing aloud. God, we do not take that freedom lightly. We thank you for it. God, thank you for even now, soldiers, men and women who are defending that very freedom that we want to enjoy and exercise today in this service. And so, Father, we pray as we come before you, God, that you would have your way, that you would move in this place in a mighty way. That, God, you would touch each and every life, each and every individual. That, God, your anointing would be with the teachers and the nursery workers as they minister, God, to our young children, God, who are here with us today. That, God, you would do a work for your glory and for your honor. Lord, let your presence, let your anointing touch each and every individual. We pray and believe in Jesus' name. And everyone said, amen and amen. Let's worship the Lord together today. When darkness tries to roll over my bones When sorrow comes to steal the joy I own When brokenness and pain is all I know oh, I won't be shaken I won't be shaken Does my fear doesn't stand a chance when I stand in your love My fear doesn't stand a chance when I stand in your love My fear doesn't stand a chance when I stand in your love And shame, and shame no longer has a place to hide and I am not a captive to the lies I'm not afraid to leave my past behind No, I won't be shaken I won't be shaken My fear doesn't stand a chance When I stand in your love My fear doesn't stand a chance when I stand in your love My fear doesn't stand a chance when I stand in your love There's power that can break of every chain This power that can empty out a grave there's resurrection power that can save There's power in your name Power in your name There's power There's power that can break off every chain 
this power that can empty out a grave this resurrection power that can save this power in your name power in your name my fear doesn't stand a chance when i stand in your love my fear doesn't stand a chance when i stand in your love and my fear doesn't stand a chance when i stand in your love the last time my fear my fear doesn't stand a chance when i stand in your love my fear doesn't stand a chance when i stand in your love my fear doesn't stand a chance when I stand in your love. kindness you have poured out grace you brought me out of darkness you have filled me with peace and giver of mercy or my help in time of need lord i can't help but sing in faithful you are and faithful forever you will be faithful you are and all your promises are yes and amen and all your promises are yes and amen Beautiful Savior, beautiful Savior, you have brought me near. You pull me from the ashes, you have broken every curse. Blessed Redeemer, you have set this captive free. Lord, I can't help but sing in faith. You are and faithful forever. You will be faithful. You are. All your promises are yes and amen. All your promises. All your promises are yes and amen. Faithful. You are faithful forever. You will be faithful. You are. All your promises are yes and amen. All your promises are yes and amen. We can rest in His promises, and I will rest. He promises my confidence. He's faithfulness. I will rest in Your promises, my confidence. He's faithfulness, and I will rest. In your promises, my confidence is your faithfulness. I will rest in your promises, my confidence 
is your faithfulness faithful faithful you are faithful forever you will be faithful you are and all your promises are yes and amen all your promises are yes and amen. Thank you, Lord. Glory. God, we thank you that we can stand in your love. There's no love like you, God. Sacrificial love. We thank you that all your promises are true and we can trust them. In Jesus' name we pray. In Revelation 19, 6 through 9, we read, Then I heard what sounded like a great multitude like the roar of rushing waters and like loud peals of thunder, shouting, Hallelujah, for our Lord God Almighty reigns. Let us rejoice and be glad and give Him glory. For the wedding of the Lamb has come and His bride has made herself ready. And later in verse nine we read, Then the angel said to me, write this, Blessed are those who are invited to the wedding supper of the Lamb. And he added, these are the true words of God. I just love this picture of marriage that the Bible gives us and this comparison, this metaphor with us getting ready for Christ. We're going to sing a song about that. What an honor to be invited to the marriage of the Lamb to come and worship Him celebration and it's the joining of the bride and the sun the two becoming one all the prophecies fulfilled in a moment so we see like the roar of many waters like the sound of rolling thunder hallelujah give him glory for the marriage of the lamb is coming Filled with wonders, filled with wonder, as we behold the man with fire in his eyes, the very word of God. And you are worthy, and every kingdom, every nation bowing down, we crown you with many crowns. Every creed and tribe and tongue declaring unity like the roar of many waters, like the sound of rolling thunder. Hallelujah. For the marriage of the Lamb, hallelujah, hallelujah, give Him glory, for the marriage of the Lamb is coming, getting ready, Jesus, Jesus. we're getting ready. shout to the whole world hears it we'll sing to the whole world knows king jesus he is faithful he is the blessed hope we'll shout to the whole world hears it we'll sing to the whole world knows king jesus he is faithful he is the blessed hope we'll shout to the whole world hears it 
will sing to the whole world knows King Jesus, He is faithful. He is the Lord. We'll shout. We'll shout to the whole world hears it. We'll sing to the whole world knows King Jesus, He is faithful. He is the blessed hope. We're getting ready. We're getting ready. We're getting ready for you. We're getting ready. The sound of rolling thunder, hallelujah, give him glory for the marriage of the Lamb is coming, hallelujah, give him glory for the marriage of the Lamb is coming. Let everyone know. We'll shout to the whole world hears. We'll sing to the whole world knows. King Jesus, He is faithful. He is the blessed hope. We'll shout to the whole world hears. We'll sing to the whole world knows. King Jesus, He is faithful. He is the blessed hope. We'll shout to the whole world hears it. We'll sing to the whole world knows. King Jesus, He is faithful. He is the. We'll shout. We'll shout to the whole world hears it. We'll sing to the whole world knows. King Jesus, He is faithful. He is the blessed hope. We're getting ready. We're getting ready. We're getting ready for you. The sound of rolling thunder, hallelujah, give him glory for the marriage of the Lamb is coming, hallelujah, give him glory for the marriage of the you know we need to be getting ready every day amen i hope and trust you are ready today and if you're not ready today's the day let's prepare let's live each and every day knowing that today could be the day of his return amen amen god bless you you may be seated in the house of the lord we want to uh, give you a little update and just ask you to be in prayer this week our weekly prayer emphasis uh, for this week is uh, the churches in ukraine uh, interesting information I just want to share with you. Uh, there's over 100 congregations in Ukraine. Did you know that? 100 Church of God uh, congregations there. There's 4,500 members that are part of our church family there in Ukraine. Uh, there's Church of God orphanages, and they have been, as we know in the news, uh, unrelenting, facing unrelenting shelling, and we just want to continue to member not only our fellow brothers and sisters, uh, that are there and still in the fight, but uh, that continue to remember that country in prayer that God would uh, bring peace, uh, comfort uh, for those who are displaced. Uh, and I just pray, you know, I think it's all right to pray too that just God would give, continue to give them enablement and favor uh, in that conflict and that war that's going on. We can believe God together. Amen? Amen. And as we pray as well, you should see on the prayer list, there's a prayer list going. This is where, this is the only time I encourage you to bring out your phones, okay? You know that. Uh, phones can distract you. I tell you, the devil will use phones to mess you up uh, in a service. And so 
Don't, play, don't be playing Candy Crush when the preacher's preaching. Uh, but we want to pray for these needs. So take a picture of these prayer needs. And this week, not only for the churches of God and the Church of God orphanages in Ukraine, but over these needs, so many needs, we know God is able. And you know what's cool is getting updates to these prayer needs and hearing how God has been moving and touching. We serve a God who is able. He's seated at the right hand. We have a Savior who is interceding for you and I. It's by His stripes we are healed, and we can come before God with confidence in prayer, knowing He is doing a work. You know, when you look at Brother Ernie a couple weeks ago, how God moved. Uh, Brother uh, Tim is here this morning, how God moved. Uh, look at what God is doing. And that, that just fuels, should fuel our prayer life realizing that we seek God doing a work. In fact, you're here this morning. That's an answer to prayer. Amen? Uh, your life is an answer to someone's prayer. Whether it was mama or daddy or a friend or a co-worker, whoever it may have been, somebody was praying for you and continues to pray for you. So as we pray one for another, know that God hears and answers prayer. We're going to do that right now. Uh, I'm going to ask you just because we're, we, we, like to, we like good calisthenics. We're Pentecostals. So join me standing one more time if you don't mind. Uh, we want to go before the Lord in prayer. And go ahead and pick out a name off that list specifically, or maybe a couple names or a couple situations. Our missionaries are on there, the Wozniaks, the Paniaguas. But pick a couple names, and maybe, maybe instead of just picking a name of someone you know, pick, pick a name of someone you don't know. And let's believe God together right now in prayer. Heavenly Father, as we come before you, we come before you as sons and daughters of the Most High God who've been grafted into the vine. We are part of the family. Lord, your word edifies us to pray one for another. God, those who are sick, those who are recovering from surgery, those who are still fighting illness, God, Lord, those who are here, God, as a testimony of your healing power, and those who are going to be here in the next few weeks as a testimony of your healing power. God, we just pray one for another. Lord, so many names on this list. We lift them up to you, O oh God. We know that you are able and we ask you to do exceedingly abundantly above what we can even think for or imagine. Lord, do a work where you get so much glory. God, where people testify and say, I can't believe what's happened to them and how God has healed them. Lord, let them testify of your greatness. Let them see your power display in their work or in their, in their lives, Father. We pray, show your glory. Lord, have your way. Minister by the stripes you bore on your back for our healing, God. Minister healing to those who need healing. Encouragement to those who are depressed, God. Lift, Lord, us up. Bring us closer to you, O oh God. Lord, minister to these needs, we pray. God, we pray for the churches in Ukraine. God, this week we want to focus, Lord, our prayer efforts on their behalf, God. We ask you to encourage them. God, we ask you to keep them safe. God, for those orphanages, young uh, orphan children, God, who are experiencing some of the biggest fear they've ever experienced in their life. God, the trauma is unimaginable to us. God, we lift them up to you right now. We pray that in the midst of the shelling, in the midst of the fear, God, that they would sense your abiding presence. That God, they would realize that you are with them in the midst of this storm that they are experiencing, Father, this war that they are in. God, in the name of Jesus, we pray, Lord, for health, for protection, for safety, oh God. And we lift up these needs to you, and God, we count them as being done in Jesus' name for your glory and honor. And everyone said, Amen and amen. God bless you. You may be seated again. Just want to share a few announcements this morning before you. Uh, again, let me thank each and every one of you who worked so hard. So many of you worked hours, tirelessly hours, uh, preparing for the Spring Festival uh, last Saturday. It was a wonderful turnout among our community. Uh, in fact, it's wonderful to see a family with us today that we first met at that uh, Spring Festival. So glad to see you all here today, this morning again. Uh, it's glad to, I'm, I'm so thankful for this church and for your diligence in ministry. You see, ministry isn't just coming on Sunday and worshiping and singing and saying amen to the preacher and shucking the corn together. Ministry is serving the Lord, putting our hands and our feet to the task of laboring for the master. 
and you did so wonderfully this past Saturday. I saw it was cool seeing every uh, every part of the Spring Festival come together, and you were a big part of that. And we want to continue on in ministry with that. So we're going we want to do some follow up. And so if you can you can help in one of three or all three ways. There's three different ways. Uh, first, we need some help uh, volunteers to uh, put some data entry. Uh, uh, entry, enter data into the computers uh, into the proper format. We have that format prepared for you, but we just need some uh, folks who wouldn't mind sitting at the computer and just typing away and entering some data uh, so we can have some follow-up, uh, maybe making some follow-up phone calls. If you love talking on the phone, this is your, this is your area of ministry. You know what I mean? I mean, some of y'all love getting on the phone and just talking and talking and talking. And talk. I don't know how you do it, but you love it. God's gifted you with that. And so if you love just meeting people and, hey, you could do that. You could volunteer to make phone calls, introduce yourself, and just thank folks for being here and maybe praying with them or whatever it is. The Lord leads you in that phone conversation. So making phone calls or, or maybe you don't want to talk to people. Uh, you say, I'd rather just give me some cards to write on. You can do that, too. We can, we've got some uh, note cards that we want to put together uh, inviting folks to services who we were able to connect with. So you can sign up at the sign up table directly to my right, which is to your back left, uh, or over there. One of these four tables, that's a lot of tables. I guess it's that one, it's that one. That table right there uh, is where you can sign up for that. And then ladies, all the ladies raise your hand, go whoop. That was weak. <laughs> Come on ladies, if you're a lady, be proud of us, go whoo. That was a little bit better. All right. You've got a ladies' night out uh, on Thursday, May the 5th at 6.30 p.m. at the Lansdown Baker's Crust. So I know the ladies always have a great time of fellowship on their ladies' nights out. And then we have the Walk for Life coming very soon. Uh, we, as we always have, want to continue to stand uh, for life and supporting the Crisis Pregnancy Center of Tidewater. We have a goal of eight walkers this year, and so, I'm sorry, not, yeah, eight walkers. So if you want to volunteer to be a part of that, uh, to help us be a part together as a family to raise funds uh, for this vital ministry in our area. Last week you saw a wonderful video, uh, and we'll be probably showing you some more of that later in the future. But that's uh, going to be uh, back to my right again. Now, I know where that table's at. It's right back there to the right. Uh, and so you can sign up if you want to be a walker. You can sign up if you want to support a walker. You can sign up. Uh, just we want to, as a church, participate. This church has always been on record of being a great supporter of this ministry, and we want to continue to do that. The event for the walkers is going to be on June 4th. Everybody say June 4th is going to be called the Together for Life. And instead of having three separate or four separate walks like they've done in the past. Everybody's going to be together at the Scope Center in Norfolk, the Norfolk Scope Center on June 4th for the Together for Life walk. So again, that table's in the back left of the room, to my right, your left, uh, so you can sign up to be a walker as well on our website. Uh, if you'll just go to events and signups, you'll see it there available to you as an option. And then if you're here for the first time, or you have a need, if you want to simply connect with us, whether it's a first time visitor, we'd love for you and ask for you. Uh, there is a connect card that should be in front of you in the chair or behind you in a chair. Uh, there's a pen you can take with you. There's pens in the back as well. Uh, please fill out a connect card so that we can connect with you. Uh, we're gonna do our best to sell your information to everybody that we can. No, we're not, we're not gonna do that. That is just for our purposes, for the staff, uh, so we can get to know you and try to make some connection with you. Uh, so if, please fill out a connect card. Trust me, there, nobody's, we are not going to sell your information. Uh, I shouldn't have said that. Uh, but uh, fill out a connect card. If you have a prayer need as well, uh, it's a great place to fill out that prayer need. Uh, you might want to, I think on the connect card there's an option. If you want it to just be a source of prayer for the staff, you can mark that. Or if you want to uh, make sure the entirety of the church is praying, you can mark that as well. And let me just say, if you're not getting the text that uh, I send out from my personal phone uh, for prayer, uh, those texts go out as individual text. Even though I send them as a group, they come across to your phone as individual text. So just in case anybody's wondering, no, uh, nobody, like if you respond back to me, the whole church doesn't see it, okay? I see it, but the whole church doesn't see it. 
but uh, if you're not getting those, please see me after service. I am not about to give my cell phone uh, on an online service, but I will give my cell phone out if you'll see me personally, or if you want to put on the connect card, pastor, make me part of the prayer list. Uh, we'll make sure you get those prayer texts uh, that come out uh, every so often when a prayer need arises and we want to alert the church about that. What's cool about that is sending those out and getting responses, seeing people praying and knowing, just think about this, knowing that when we send out a prayer text all across the Hampton Roads areas, folks are joining together in prayer specifically for that need. And think about that. What if that's your son? What if that's your daughter? What if that's your wife or your husband that that prayer text is about knowing the church is praying for you and believing God for you. And it's really cool. It's not only you see the responses, but then you get news later that evening. Hey, God moved. God healed. Prayer works. Praying together works. Amen? Amen. So, uh, please make yourself available to that as well on the Connect card. Alright, with no further ado, I am honored. We are privileged. We are blessed uh, to have one of the state's premier pastors with us today. Uh, Pastor Donald Jones and his wife, Sandra, pastor the Pulaski Church of God. Uh, it ha also happens to be the church my mom and dad are going to and uh, involved with. Uh, so past I've known Pastor Jones uh, for the amount of years I've been in this state. In fact, when I was at youth camp, I think I knew Pastor Jones then. Uh, I knew of him. And so his reputation uh, is very warranted. Uh, this, this man and wife love the Lord. Uh, and again, they are tremendous ministers of the gospel. You are going to be blessed. We are blessed to have them with us here. When I found out he was going to be in the area this weekend, I snagged him up. Uh, I said, if we can get him, we're going to get him. And so we are blessed to have him here this morning. So would you join me in giving the Kemp's, uh, join me, Kempsville Church, in giving uh, Pastor Jones a wonderful Kempsville Church welcome. Can you do that? Please work. All right, Seth, it says R E R F mute off. I want it to be off. I did hit the button. Oh, there's another button. I just turned it off. Oh, this is, I'm glad this is me and not you right now. Oh, there we go. Can someone say praise the Lord? Praise the Lord. <clears throat> it's great to be with you in the house of the Lord today. <clears throat> we are here uh, with some very close friends of ours, longtime friends, uh, as we begin our uh, vacation. And uh, I'm actually a, a Chesapeake native. Uh, my wife is from Portsmouth. Uh, go Indian River Braves. Uh, she graduated in Norcom, and, uh, but our, our roots are here. In fact, my home church is now Kingdom Life Ministries. Years ago, it was Great Bridge Church of God. And uh, so uh, uh, we have, uh, in fact, when we were pulling in this morning, I was telling Tim, uh, Tim Batten, that I, I went to a revival service when it was over there, when the sanctuary was over there years and years and years ago. And uh, so that probably is giving away a little bit of my, uh, my age. We won't talk about that too much. But uh, anyway, it's an honor to be here, honor to be here to, to share the gospel and to be with uh, Pastor Fry and his family and uh, First Lady Crystal and, and to be able to just, uh, to just share. Yes, I have uh, uh, brother, brother and Sister Fry have recently uh, been coming to our church probably for about, uh, I guess, probably uh, about nine months now, uh, uh, close to a year, and, and they're a tremendous blessing. I know you've gotten to know them some. And uh, he told me, he kind of, he put a little pressure on me. He said, now I want you to go down there and I, I want you to do great. And I said, okay, well, I'm, I'm going to do what I can. Uh, but uh, Brother and Sister Fry, great people. Adam, thank you uh, for the honor to be able to come and to share with you. Now, I'm going to tell you, <clears throat> I, I don't consider myself to be a, a long-winded preacher. My pastor told me a long time ago, he said, preaching is like drilling for oil, after 30 minutes, quit boring. Now, some of y'all don't get that. You'll get it over lunch this afternoon. 
<clears throat> but I promise you, if you'll help me preach, we'll have a good time in the Lord. I believe God has directed me for this morning, directed me for this hour, and uh, I'm so thankful that you are here uh, uh, to uh, uh, share the Word of God uh, with me today. And uh, so uh, Tim and Robinette Batten are very good friends of ours, Brenda Pugh. Got uh, one or two of my former youth here that are no longer youth, but uh, they're here with us today from when we were youth pastoring in Great Bridge uh, several years ago. But if you have your Bibles, turn with me if you would to Luke chapter 11. Luke chapter 11. And after we read the scripture, I'm just going to ask you, if you will, to leave your Bible open there. Luke chapter 11, and we're going to begin at verse 5. These are the words of Jesus. And he said unto them, Which of you shall have a friend, and shall go unto him at midnight, and say unto him, Friend, lend me three loaves for a friend of mine in his journey is come to me and I have nothing to set before him and he from within shall answer and say trouble me not the door is now shut and my children are with me in bed I cannot rise and give thee I say unto you though he will not rise and give him because he is his friend yet because of his importunity or his perseverance he will rise and give him as many as he needs. And I say unto you, ask and it shall be given you. Seek and you shall find. Knock and it shall be opened unto you. For every one that asketh receiveth, and he that seeketh findeth. And to him that knocketh it shall be opened. I'm going to ask you if you would to stretch your hand this direction and pray God's blessing and anointing over his word and over his servant today. Would you join with me and let's pray together. Father, we bless you. Thank you, Lord, for the promise that is given to us that where the spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty, there is freedom. And so today, as I have this uh, great honor, this high honor to stand as your ambassador behind this sacred desk, I pray for the anointing of the Holy Spirit. I pray for the word of God that it would go forth with power and with authority. And God, that someone's life would be changed as a result of hearing the word of the Lord. You tell us faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. And so today, this moment, these moments together for a little bit, Lord, I pray that the word of God would change us, that our faith would be ignited, and that we would reach to higher heights and deeper depths in Jesus Christ. We give you thanks. We give you praise for these blessings in Jesus' name. And the church said, Amen. Does two bottles of water mean I can preach twice as long, Pastor? Okay, I'm just checking. <clears throat> this is a parable in the Bible. And I want to ask a question about this parable, and I want you to think about this, ponder this. The question that I have for you in this parable is, which friend is Jesus? Which friend is Jesus? Jesus taught a lot about prayer. Uh, he had a lot to say about prayer and being persistent and being committed to prayer, believing that as you pray, God will hear and answer your prayer and meet your need. But for a few moments this morning, I'd like to take a, a little different angle to these verses. And I want to talk about friends. Jesus is sharing a parable. And I asked myself the question, the first time I ever read this, I asked myself the question, if Jesus himself was one of the three friends in this parable, which one would he be? Could you find Jesus in the attitude, the personality, the posture, the position of either of these friends. Now, to be clear, there are three friends in this parable. The first friend is a traveling friend. The second friend is the host friend. And the third friend is the neighbor friend. And I'd like for us for a few moments this morning to look at each one of these three friends. First of all, I'd like for us to look at the traveling friend. 
If you read into that parable, you will understand that this friend has been traveling maybe during the day when the sun is intense and the heat is picking up and the air is dry. Or maybe he's been traveling at night when the air has gotten really cold, the sun has gone down, and now it's, there's bone chills that he's dealing with. He's looking for a place. He has, he has a great need. He's traveling. He's on a journey. He's a friend that is in need. He is thirsty. He is hungry. He is weary. Well, if I were to look at that, the traveling friend, it takes us no time at all to realize that Jesus is not the traveling friend, could not be the traveling friend. And let me tell you why Jesus couldn't be the traveling friend. First of all, Jesus is never hungry, for Jesus is the bread of life. Amen. In fact, if you read in Psalms 105 and verse 40, it says that he can rain down bread from heaven. We read in the Word of God in John 6, where Jesus called himself the bread of God that comes down from heaven and gives life unto the world. Not only is he uh, never hungry, but we also read in the Word of God that he's never thirsty. He can't be the traveling friend because he never has a desire to have his thirst quenched. As a matter of fact, he said of himself in Isaiah 44 and 3, I will pour water on him who is thirsty. Psalm 65 and 9 tells us that you visit the earth and you water it. Praise God. We read in Psalm 66 and, or John 7 and 37, Jesus himself said, if any man is thirsty, let him come unto me and drink. And, and so we know that Jesus is never hungry. And we know that Jesus is never thirsty. And finally, we also know he's not the traveling friend in this parable because he has no need to travel. Why is that? Because he is not only all powerful, but praise God this morning, he is all knowing and praise God, he's not only all powerful and all knowing, but he's also omnipresent. I'm so thankful today that Jesus is not a traveling friend, but he is a very present help in the time of your trouble. Well, praise the Lord. The psalmist said it best. He tried to uh, figure out if there was a way that he could get away from the presence of the Lord. But he came to this realization and he penned these words. He said, if I ascend up into heaven, you are there. If I make my bed in hell, you are there. You go to the ends of the earth, you will find that Jesus will always be there for you. I don't know about you, but there are many moments that I cannot see God. God, but there is not one moment that God does not see me. Well, praise the Lord. I'm so thankful today that he is a very present help in the time of my trouble and in the time of my need. So quickly we discover that Jesus in the parable, he could not be the traveling friend. So then we go to the second friend and we find out we'll call him the host friend. He's the one the traveling friend comes to. This friend, he's a good person. He's a good host. He has a good heart. But on this particular occasion, he doesn't have the supply. He doesn't have the provision to care for his traveling friend. I mean, his friend is, is hungry and, and thirsty and exhausted and tired. And if you're a student of Scripture at all, you know back in the Old Testament in Eastern culture and customs, you would discover that that a tired traveler was always received and welcome. You would also discover that even for a stranger, if a stranger came to your house, that you would prepare a banquet for that stranger that was traveling through. Well, how much more for a friend that was traveling, uh, traveling through? The best milk and the most fatted calf was killed for strangers that were on a journey. How much for more for a friend? In fact, if you go back to Genesis chapter 18, I find this kind of humorous. Three strangers came by to visit Abraham in the heat of the day. Abraham is 99 years old. 99 years old. Three strangers come to visit Abraham and Sarah. And as they stand there in the heat of the day, Abraham realizes his host's responsibility. And he tells Sarah, you go bake a cake and I'm going to go and kill a fatted calf. And the Bible 
Bible says, watch this, 99-year-old Abraham ran. He ran. I'm 56, and I don't run all that great. But he ran to get him a fatted calf to kill and, and to serve to three complete strangers. That is what a host did in the Bible days. And I, I find as I looked at this, I said, this host's friend, he has a heart like Jesus, but he does not have the ability like Jesus. Oh, praise the Lord. I'm getting excited about where I'm getting ready to go. You see, this friend wasn't prepared for his friend's arrival. And even though well-intentioned, he hadn't planned for unexpected a company. And therefore, he was found wanting when his traveling friend came to town. This is not consistent with Jesus. I'm happy to announce to you this fine spring Sunday morning that Jesus as a host friend is not just ready for one tired, weary, hungry, thirsty, traveling friend, but he says to everybody in this room in Matthew chapter 11 and verse 28, come unto me all ye that labor and are heavy laden and I will give you rest. I've come about to tell someone today that he is still the same God that in Philippians chapter 4 said I will supply all of your needs according to my riches in glory by Christ Jesus he's the same God that said in 2 Corinthians 9 and verse 8 God is able to make all grace abound toward you that you having sufficiency in all all things will abound to every good work. I'm telling you, I serve a Lord who is the host with the most. Somebody give the Lord praise. Hallelujah. <laughs> oh, shout that with me. Host with the most. <laughs> Psalm 78, 19. It tells us that God furnishes a table and he does it in the wilderness. In the driest places of your life, God will furnish a table for you. Not only in the wilderness, but Psalms 23 tells us that he will prepare a table before us in the pre presence of our enemies. I'm telling you, while the hounds of hell are raging against you, your father is fixing breakfast at your next stop. And not only in the wilderness and not only in the presence of our enemies, but the scripture tells us in the Song of Solomon, chapter 2 and verse 4, that he leads us to his banqueting table and over top of the banqueting table is a banner that tells us exactly how much he loves each and every one of us. I'm going to say it again. He is the host who with the most. I thank God for host friends. We're staying with two very good host friends this weekend. They knew we were coming. But the truth of the matter is they only comes along once in a lifetime if you're fortunate that you have one person that says call or don't call come make the trip my home is your home there'll always be a table spread there'll always be a bed ready there'll always be a warm fireplace and more importantly there'll always be an ear ready to listen few of us in this room have experienced a, a friend like that on earth but there is one he will host us on the Atlantic shores he will host us on the Blue Ridge Parkway. He will host us in these altars. He will host us in our homes. He'll host you when you're driving. He'll host you when no one else is around. You don't even have to make an appointment. All you do is have to show up. And when you show up, the host with the most says, I've got everything that you need. Well, praise the Lord. <laughs> he hosted Elijah. When he was running from, for his life from Jezebel in the middle of the wilderness, he hosted Elijah. He provided for him bread morning and night from the ravens and bread from a widow in Zarephath. He hosted Elijah when he was exhausted and even when he was suicidal. 
with angel food from heaven's ovens. <laughs> he is the host with the most. And no one can do me like Jesus. I said no one can do me like Jesus. <laughs> Hallelujah. So you have the traveling friend and you have the host friend. And then finally there is the neighbor friend. This friend's asleep with his family. And when the host friend, sensitive to the needs of the traveling friend, but yet he's unprepared, he comes to the neighbor friend and asks for three loaves of bread. Notice two things. Number one, the neighbor friend has gone to bed. Number two, the neighbor friend doesn't want to be bothered. Oh, more so than the first two friends, we come to the quick realization that Jesus is not and cannot be this friend. First of all, Jesus has not gone to bed. <laughs> he will be the same Lord at 3 a.m. tomorrow morning as he is at 12 o'clock noon today. He'll be the same Lord as he is on Blue Monday, as he is on sunny Sunday afternoon. <laughs> the Bible teaches us. In fact, as I'm getting older, I'm, it's becoming more of frequent in my thanksgiving, in my prayer time. But the Bible teaches us that he gives his beloved sleep you didn't appreciate sleep as much or at least I didn't when I was in my 20s and 30s and 40s but oh I thank God for sleep now and he gives I found myself thanking God for food and water and my house and my heat and my family and all of that the other day and I said oh yep yeah. Thank you, Lord, you gave me a good night's sleep last night. <laughs> it's a precious gift, is a good night's sleep. But hear this preacher. More importantly, hear the Bible. Psalms 121 says that he that keeps you never slumbers or sleeps. Never slumbers nor sleeps. The second thing you need to understand is that this Unlike this neighbor friend, Jesus is not a friend who is reluctant to give. As a matter of fact, he's more willing to give than we are to receive. Mm. The best of friends may be ill as a hornet when you ask for something in the middle of the night. But the Lord's eyes are upon the righteous even in the middle of the night, and his ears are open to their cry. So if Jesus would not be any of these first three friends, then which friend is he? Can I just tell you today, I submit to you that he's the fourth friend. He's not the traveling friend because he's always there. He's not the host friend who runs out when you're in need. He's not the neighbor friend who sleeps or is reluctant to help you. He's the fourth friend. And our fourth friend waits for us and says, if you would have just called out to me the first time. But y'all don't get quiet on me now. We call Tom and Harry and Sally before we call Jesus. We call the doctor, the lawyer, and the family counselor before we call Jesus. We call the pastor and the worship leader and our Christian friend before we call upon Jesus. <laughs> and he says to us, in Jeremiah 33 and 3, call unto me. Call unto me, 
and I will answer you. And I will show you great things which you did not know. <laughs> we need the fourth friend. Say it with me. We need the fourth friend. Shadrach was a friend of Meshach, and Meshach was a friend of Abednego. But when they got into a dilemma in the fiery furnace, they couldn't help each other. They needed the fourth friend. And the king stood there, and he looked in. He said, I thought we threw three in. What is this? I see a fourth. And the fourth one, they're all walking around, but there's something about the fourth one. He looks like the Son of God. Thanks be unto God. When you pass through the fire, the flame will not kindle upon you. Why? Because the fourth friend is with you. Peter, James, and John. Man, they've been friends for years. They're on a stormy sea of Galilee. Had been there many times. No doubt bailed each other out of tough situations. But this time their expertise as fishermen and sailors of the high seas could not help them or each other. They were hopeless. Who'd they need? They need the fourth friend. Woo! <laughs> they need the fourth friend. And let me tell you something. The fourth friend in the Gospel of Mark sent him out on the Sea of Galilee while it was calm, and he went up into the mountain to pray. I've never figured this out. It's always been, Superman ain't got nothing on his bionic vision. He goes up into the mountain to pray. He's way up in the mountain talking to God. They're out on the storm-tossed Sea of Galilee, and the Scripture says he saw them toiling in their rowing. He saw them. He watched them. He prayed for them. Hallelujah. Can I tell you, the scripture is very clear. The Lord is in his holy temple. He's in his righteous place. And his eyes behold, his eyelids try the children of men. His eyes are upon you today. Day. He's at the right hand of the Father. He ever lives to make intercession for the saints. He's watching you today. He knows the difficulty you're going through today. And I'm telling you, he prays to the Father for you today. But I've also come by to tell you that the same fourth friend that watched from the mountain didn't stay in the mountain. For the Bible says he walked right into the stormy sea of Galilee, walked right into their boat, and said, peace, be still between 3 and 6 a.m. in the morning. Their extremity became his opportunity. I've come by to tell you today, he's not only praying for you, but through the Holy Spirit, he will walk into your situation and he will make some dramatic changes. Somebody give him praise. Hallelujah. That same promise in Isaiah 43. When you pass through the waters, I will be with you. And they will not overflow you. People say, where's Pulaski? Well, it's about 30 minutes south of Radford. 40 minutes away from Blacksburg. It's the mountains. Man, I come from the coast. Served for many years in Fredericksburg and Richmond. Church burned down in Pulaski. God sent us there to rebuild. I know how I was going to do. I was from the coast. Your pastor said something a while ago that kind of caused me to chuckle because when I was in Richmond, we get good and fired up as a preacher. We say we're throwing down. 
You don't say that in Southwest Virginia. You say you're shucking corn down there. Ain't that the truth? I think I've learned three words since I've been in Southwest Virginia. They're trying to teach me. They're really trying. I got y'all down, Pat. But I do believe that God brought me from the mountains to the coast on divine assignment today. And I don't know who it's for. It may be for just a small handful in the room. It may be for several in the room. But it's time to move Jesus from being your fourth friend to being your best friend. And when you make him your best friend, your extremity will become his opportunity to manifest his mighty power. My God, I sense his spirit. If you're like me, you've trusted friends that have run out on you. You've trusted friends who doesn't have, don't have what you need. You've trusted the friend who is self-serving and self-centered and goes to bed at the hour that you need them the most Proverbs 17 tells us that a friend loves at all times and yet honestly in, in my assessment there's really only one friend capable of doing that truthfully and that is Jesus the friend that sticks closer than a brother Pastor, I, you know, we like to think when we preach 25, 30, 35, 40 minutes that everybody retains everything that we've said. It took me a long time to realize I ain't that good. But if I can leave you with one thought that the Holy Spirit seals to your mind, then I have fulfilled my assignment. And I want this to be something that challenges you. But it's this truth. Your miracle cannot be your first priority while Jesus is your fourth friend. Your miracle cannot be your first priority while Jesus is your fourth friend. My God, Holy Spirit, seal this to the hearts and minds of your people. The greatest candidate for a miracle is the one who calls their best friend Lord. The best candidate for a miracle is the one who calls their best friend Lord. Would you bow your heads with me? My Lord, I sent your spirit. I get some music playing ever so softly. This is a threefold altar invitation. I've got to be obedient. First, Jesus is not your number one relationship. You need to come and spend a little time with him. Reestablish his lordship in your life. If it's your spouse, if it's a, your companion, if it's your child, 
if it's a family member, if it's a hmm, if it's a friendship, if there's if there's someone that if you're honest here lately seems to be a little more important than Jesus does you you need to come and reestablish your relationship to his lordship if you're here this morning and you're you're hurting from wounds that friends have inflicted upon you in just a moment I'm going to invite you to come for prayer it could be someone in the church it could be someone on the job it could be your very best friend for many many years and they have they have given you a wound. They have injured you, and you need healing. And then finally, if, if you're here this morning, you need a miracle. You just say, I, I, I need a miracle. Would you be willing to just come and say, Jesus, you're my very closest friend. <laughs> the host with the most. You, there's nothing you don't have. You have everything I have need of. And I desperately need a touch from the Lord. I wonder if there'd be some folks that would leave from where you are and just come and stand around this altar and lift your hands. Maybe I've described you in one of these three invitations. Jesus, I'm looking to you. They're coming. They're coming. Jesus, I'm looking to you. You're not the host that runs out. You're not the friend that forsakes me. Lord, I need you. Lord, I need you. Hallelujah. 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 I sense in this place that there's some hurting folks. But we know who the healer is. If you'd be so comfortable, would you just lift both hands to heaven right now? You in the congregation, stand to your feet. Extend your hand this direction. Pastor, join me. If you've got a prayer team to join me. Say, Jesus, I'm looking to you today. You're the only one that can help me. <laughs> You're the only one that can help me. Lord, in Jesus' name, in Jesus' name, you know what she has need of today. In Jesus' name, you know why he stands here with his hands raised and surrender to you, Lord. Today, today I reestablish your lordship in my life. <laughs> Thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you, Holy Spirit. <laughs> oh, hallelujah. You in the congregation, would you just begin to pray in concert right now for these? This is your family up here. Would you just begin to lift up your voices to the Lord for them? You know, several of them up here call their names out in prayer, would you? 
Father, in the name of Jesus, touch my sister today. Sweet Jesus, do your significant work in her life and in her heart. Do what only you can do that will bring you the greatest glory and honor and praise out of this time around this altar. Miracles are going to take place in the glory of God. The name of Jesus is going to be lifted up. Hallelujah. 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 Thank you, Father. Thank you, Jesus. That's right. I'm worshiping you today. You're not the fourth friend to me. You're my first friend. You're my closest friend. You're a friend that sticks even closer than a brother. You're the friend that loves at all times. You're never in a mood. You never run out on me. My trust is in you. Holy Ghost, have your way. Have your way. Somebody cry aloud right now. The scripture says, lift your voice like a trumpet all over this place. Would you begin to magnify the Lord with me and let us exalt his name together? Thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Lord, I need you today. I need you today. I need you today. Do a work that only you can do. Do a work that will glorify your name. Mm, there is no way. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. If you're the redeemed of the Lord in the house, if you're a child of God, would you just lift both hands to heaven and just begin to praise him right now? Would you do that? Come on, come on. Don't be backwards here. We're family. Magnify the Lord. Come on, come on, praise him. Praise him. The Bible says he inhabits the praises of his people. His address is your praise. His address is your worship. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah.
Wish somebody would worship him in this place. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Amen. Has it not been good to be in the house of the Lord this morning? Amen. Can we let Pastor Jones know once again? Give him a big Kimsfield Church. Thank you, Pastor Jones. We're glad that we could host a, a coast guy today. And let me tell you something. Once you've learned to say y'all, you can't stop no matter where you go. Uh, trust me. But it is good to see each and every one of you. It has been good to be in the house of the Lord today. And so let us come this Wednesday night. We're going to continue our uh, discourse, our study through the Great Exchange. It is a wonderful study in prayer. And I tell you, God is really just... I, I've really enjoyed Wednesday night lessons and time of learning and growing together. So join us Wednesday night for that. Kids ministry kicked off this past Wednesday night. It was a great beginning Wednesday night for our relaunch of the kids ministry. So thank you to our teachers that are doing that. Look, they, there's a lot of work and preparation and training. I mean, they've, they've been working diligently. So you want to bring your children this Wednesday night, uh, 7 o'clock p.m. Our foundation, our college, our, found, our college and career class foundations ministry we meets as well. And then Revolt Youth is meeting as well at 7. So there's all kinds of options. You have no excuses. Be here Wednesday night at 7 o'clock. And then let's come prepared next Sunday uh, to be in the house of the Lord. Let's come expecting and believing God together. Amen. Amen. Uh, you may be seated. Look, let me do one thing real quick. Uh, and that is to remind you of your giving. If you don't mind, uh, we have boxes in the side. Uh, you can go to kimsfieldchurch.com. You can give that way. Or you can text to give at 757-250-4483. Uh, so we are going to pray over the offering and will be dismissed as well this morning. Amen. Let's pray. Father God, we can't help but say thank you, God. Thank you. Lord, you're not just a traveling friend. You're not just a host friend. God, you're, you're not just even the fourth friend. God, be our best friend. Father, more than ever before, help our desire through every waking moment of the week, every day, God, to draw near and closer to you than ever before. Helping us realize, Lord, that there's a promise of your word that simply says, if we will draw near to you, you will draw near to us. So God, let that more than ever before be the desire, the pressing desire of our heart is to just know you, Lord, more than ever before. God, realizing that you want to be our best friend as well. So God, help us in Jesus' name. Lord, we pray your blessings on the offering. We pray that, Father, you would bless those who have to give and those who don't. God, I pray you bless their means of income, their home. Help them to be good stewards. Bless their bills. Lord, everything they have financially they're going through, just pray your blessings upon your people. God, we pray that, Lord, as we give unto you, we, we pray that you would enable us and help us as we always have endeavored to do to be good stewards. Lord, applying each and every gift, God, to ministry. Lord, those in the Hampton Roads area, those of this church, those overseas as well, God, we want to give unto you out of a cheerful and thankful heart in Jesus' name. And everyone said, amen and amen. Now, join me standing one more time just because we want to keep moving. Edie, it's good to see you over there, young lady. God bless you. It's good to see you. Good to see all of you here. Turn to your neighbor and say, I'm glad you got to sit beside me today. If you really want to mess with their mind, look at them and say, man, you are an awesome singer. You should go out for get a bus and go on the road. Amen. It's been good to be in the house of the Lord. May the Lord bless you. May the Lord keep you. May his face shine upon you. Go in the blessing and the favor and the anointing of the Lord and win someone to Jesus this week. Be a light for the glory of God this week. Go and be blessed in Jesus' name. God bless you. You are dismissed.